14th little film, pattern of the month. Uh, month I just rolling away. And uh, to be honest with you, right now I get reports on how good conditions are getting in Scotland. I should be in on the lower oikel right now. And the rain is coming on this Spade River and um, I'm here. But that's how it is. It's been a tricky year with the, with the COVID thing. And uh, we've been tying more flies and fishing less and fishing more and more home waters. Um, so today uh, I can start by saying that actually we got a few of our stuff in now, like the leather wallets. And uh, I actually been started to fill up my bullets uh, and I think they're pretty cool they're good looking stuff right now but uh, <clears throat> I can imagine when you had them I was going to say a generation but had them some sometime they will I think look really cool and also you know that we are supporting the fight for the wild fish with uh, uh, a few things that where we give away uh, money to three organizations and we have now from uh, eco-friendly mirror to more thermos bottles and um, I think they're cool these with the silver silver and black ones and cups that goes to to with those two and uh, We got them in stock right now, and if you want to show you you uh, support the fight buy one where and use it with pride you've been uh, doing good things okay fly tying film so a little bit talk on on stuff and also we have the table cover you see I'm, I'm using it now we have it in stock now too today I'm gonna tie a fly that I think looking in my mailbox it's the fly that most of you have asked for and actually there were quite a few people asking already when we started this do silen so um we're i'm gonna tie silen today which is a pattern that originates from one of my old guiding friends roland holmberg and i was looking through my drawer i know i have a few of the original flies that roland tied back in the 80s and then i came up with the idea why not call roland and uh, see what he says about his fly. And let's see if this works now. If you can hear him. If he's there. He's not there. Oh, Rola. Here we go. Hey, Rola. Hey, Mikael. Uh, we have to do this in English. We are doing a little film here actually and uh, I'm doing a flight time film and I'm gonna tie one of your patterns. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So that you should try to catch more fish than I do. I understand. Yes. <laughs> you have to speak loud. This is a, like an experimental thing. I don't know if it works. You have to scream a bit. <laughs> so you... Okay, I'll, I'll try to yeah that's good i'll i'll co I'll, I'll turn the phone like this uh, uh listen i'm tying silen i call it silen i know i i wrote an article about it and call it silla la rolla uh, <laughs> tell me a little bit about this where where does it uh, originate from and what's the ideas behind this pattern well it started when uh, we first uh, should fish in golfos 1984 i think it was uh, and it's just uh, the difference between Galfos and the sea is 40 meters so that the salmon has very easy access up to that pool. And I, I thought when we should start to, to fish there that, that I should tie a fly that imitated the, the herring or the sill that the fish feed on in the Trondheim Fjord. Uh, that was the idea behind the fly. Uh -huh. So... Imitation and salmon flies, did, does that go hand in hand? Well, it's, that was a theory I had then. Uh, after that, I have learned from the person that has the trap outside in 
Trondheim Fjord that mark the fish each year, that when they take that trap in, and, uh, and, and the fish, of course, are stressed before they get a marker in them, uh, the fellow running the trap has told me that very often in stress, the salmon throw up herring. Uh -huh. And we've caught them in the foss less than a week after that. So we can say for sure that the fish was feeding on herring maybe a week before they enter the pool. And I thought then, and I still think, that it could be something that tricks that it takes to fly. Okay. Uh, I should tell the audience here that Roland and I are old friends since early 80s. I think we met first time in Eld Colby in the back in the late 70s, but uh, but we started guided together back in the 80s and we've been friends ever since. And maybe yeah, I should... I remember we, we, we met you in, in Eld Colby and you were fishing sea trout with an orange Montana looking fly that I thought was ugly then and still do. Yeah. Be honest now, did I catch fish? I have to admit, yes, that's why you were asked to come and guide with us in Norway. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, listen, uh, um, I can tell some bad things about you. I tell the audience that we are actually talking to a former prawn fisherman. He used to be red up to his elbows. Um, oh, yes. <laughs> I'm still very proud that I caught some big salmon that way and I learned things that you haven't experienced yet. Uh, no, I am. I am. <laughs> I am. Okay, but, uh, but Rola, back to the fly now. Uh, uh, this is a fantastic f fly pattern and, uh, and it's been spread all over the world and there's so many big fish caught on it. Um, you still fish it, don't you? Yes, I do. Uh, and I still fish and guide in Galfos a few weeks each year and if I go somewhere and fish when the fish is, is uh, still silver I still use it yes okay it's That's still good. working and it worked for steelhead when I was over and fished with combs on the on the D as well okay listen uh, tell the guys watching here what what are you I mean I fish this for me it's a it's a it's a fly I use on on clear rivers on and especially on a sunny day and I've had some fantastic fishing on it too. Uh, is that where when you use it too? Yes, uh, clear water uh, and cold and high water. Uh -huh. not, not brownish, not the, the color you get when it has rained, the, the melt color one could say. Uh, and I first tied it in that small house down at Gaulfoss uh, with I think I used bucktail to start with, and I had a, a Mylar tinsel body that I made a little thicker, and I remember I pushed that material between my forefinger and thumb, so I get a little hang belly, so to say. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then it was white and black bucktail, and then a, a light blue front tackle and I had jungle cocks I remember and, and quite a lot of flashable okay uh, because I wanted some attention to it and, and big I remember the first one was at least twice as big as the flies that we saw was brought from Scotland so I guess it was around four inches or something okay 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 if you uh, would have been here we could have asked you to tie one but now I'm uh, gonna let you go to your dinner and I'm gonna do the tying here for for the people here so uh, I hope I hope they heard you I did <laughs> okay yeah, I hope so too and I I, have, I hate to admit it but you tie more pretty flies than I do so I think you are doing what you're doing best okay and maybe sometimes I can catch a fish behind your back oh well, I haven't seen that yet but we'll see one day maybe <laughs> Okay, Roland, thanks very, thanks very much for this little experimental interview over the phone into the cameras here. Uh, okay, my, my pleasure. Okay, have a good evening, and, and uh, we're uh, scheduled to fish together in a few days' time, right on the M and the Murram, so I'll see you there, I okay? I look forward to that. Oh, oh, yes. Okay, bye, bye my friend. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Hopefully you heard him. Uh, <laughs> Roland is a great guy and he's as extremely passionate about his fishing and he's also an, a very skilled 
Atlantic salmon fishermen with a lot of experience guided he still guides uh, uh, started in the early 80s he also guided Rio Grande on the Cautopen a few years too okay so let's go into the tying here now then like uh, in life fishing is uh, it's important to have really good friends and um, and uh, I'm I'm fortunate to have a lot of really good fishing buddies uh, that's been with me a long time. Uh, Roland's one of them. So, Sillen. Gonna tie a Sillen today now. And let's see how we do this. Uh, I'll first I'm gonna tie it on uh, on a medium uh, blue. Fits to being together with the uh, white extra small. And I use my tube cutter and I can tell you, many of you asked me about the tube cutters and they are now scheduled to be here late June. And we decided to wait because we're going to get all the three last tools in our series uh, at the same time. Okay, so I'll start by cutting an angle here and I put on the medium that I put together with the extra small and I use a white one. Put this together <clears throat> and today I'm going to use uh, a white thread. Oh, this is a new spool. I'm going to, you will have to see me do the trick with the, when you have your bobbin, uh, uh, takes a little time to get this out. <clears throat> when the bobbin needs to roll smooth i'll wax it a little bit see if i can use my old eyes and i actually had a journalist take a photo when i do this i just pull it on my nose you always have a little grease there okay so uh, let me move a little bit here so i use a white thread on this and i start by putting some thread over the part where i cut the angle on the medium and uh, this is to keep this together this will make the medium hold the extra small you heard me talk about this before then i do on a mirage tinsel and i love the mirage material because it picks up the color it's got a very nice shine to it but it also picks up the color on the material you are using and on this the mirage will turn a little blue and I wind it back and I turn and wind it front so I'll double it up and actually Sillen it's not like my friend Roland plain but it's pretty plain fly uh, and when it comes to the to the flies I use on clear waters I want them to be really translucent so I'm not going to put a tail on here if I was going to use this on an early spring I'll put a tail on but I'm not going to do that now I'm going to use um, two different colors of uh, hollow braid and I'm going to do a blue one and I'm going to do a silver one. And here you can choose actually if you want to have the blue in the body or the silver. I'm going to put the silver on uh, as a body because, uh, uh, because Roland Fly had a silver body. He used uh, the Mylar piping. I don't. I use this. It's easier to work with and stronger. And... Um, since I always try to uh, do some little trick in every film that you perhaps haven't seen yet, I'm going to do this with three different braids today. And what I do is I tie in one of each first of the silver and the blue. Then I tie in what's going to be the body. And then I wind down the silver body and I wind it on hard overlap it make it grow so i get a little taper to
to the tinsel body and I go front so I'm passing half of the body, secure it underneath. And uh, the reason I do that, I want to have 50-50, but <clears throat> I'm doing that so I can back down with my dubbing. And on the big fly, of course, I will use, uh, a, uh, I used the glitz dubbing. Glitz got, it got longer fibers. And I just spin it on and again, never use wax. Wax will melt and disappear. Take a little time and just spin it on. Take the dubbing back down on the tinsel before you turn. And uh, it's easier to keep the thread uh, fairly short when you tie, so you don't dub it out and then it's impossible to tie in. So that's why I do just a little bit at a time here. Okay, so tie this in, back down, save about four to six millimeters where uh, you're gonna tie in, I'm back down and pack this a little more, where you're gonna tie in your wings and hackles. I want as much as possible on the fly to be tied on the medium tubing. This is what I call a classic design. Uh, it's, it's tied not with a loose body. Now I, I fish a lot of loose bodies. Uh, it's tied uh, with the body, hackle and a wing on the same system uh, ending up with the cone to balance the fly. Okay, so here we go. After that, we're gonna do a hackle, a body hackle, and I'm gonna use uh, one of my favorite colors, actually, um, a silver badger one. And I always strip off some of the soft uh, fibers before I tie it in, and I tie it in underneath. Always cut between all the tying. And instead of now just backing down like this with a hackle, what I do is that I always start with one here before I back down. So I, I, I get most of the hackle volume in the front and then I back down four turns. Then I'm gonna use our own plier. It's not here yet, but I'll show you one of the big advantages here. And that is that I can now take this and I can put it there and it's heavy enough to hold the hackle in place while I do this. Now I'm going to show you this little trick. What I do, you know that I always spin the same braid for ribbings as I use for body. And what I do here now, I spin two of them and when I... I've done that a little bit like this. I will spin them together. It's going to be really fancy where I have like a blue and silver striped ribbing like this. Then I just cross over. And uh, when I have uh, secured my hackle, I can take this away. And on this, I go over four turns and I make sure that I pull down the ribbing hard into the dubbing and then I secure it. If I want this to be super, super strong, I go a little front and I take this, make sure I make it even again. And then I just fold this back and I double back. This way it's trapped, can't slip and what I'm doing is going to be a stronger fly. Cut it off. When I secure this and you can see how I have a quite well tapered body, I take 
uh, my little magic brush and I hold the fly and then I terrorize this. And I said, this is the meanest brush on the market. It's just picks out everything. And I can just brush this so I get a few of these fibers. See, it picks up my thread too. Uh, come on now. Uh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Here we go. And I decide how much I want it to be brushed out. If I have one or two that's too long, I just can take them away afterwards. But this is what I want. I want a very translucent body that will uh, let a lot of light through, but also with the flashy, uh, it will also reflect a lot of light. Okay, so add a little more flash. I do our uh, SSS uh, Angular HD, which is a heavier angel, angel hair than the regular one. I do it in the clear water blue color. Uh, I take a little bit and I I do it white between my fingers and I tie it in on top, make sure that I use like half of the diameter of the tubing and then I double it back, spread it out and tie it in. Don't cut like this. Taper, pull, and make these uneven. If I have one or two too long, I will take them out, uh, off afterwards. <clears throat> okay, time for first wing. And as I said, this is a fairly plain fly. It will have only two colors. Actually, it is uh, the main color of the wing is black. And... Uh, uh, sorry, or it's white <laughs> and the black is just to get a little back on it and as always I try to use hair where I can use the bottom part too for my wing because otherwise if I use too long hair and take away the bottom part I miss out the curly part of the hair and it's the curly part that makes the volume and also makes the fly translucent. And I brush, brush it through with my uh, same little mean brush and uh, change hands. And when I look at this, uh, I can see if it's tapered or not. And this is very even. So I take my fingers and move my fingers up and I pull out part of it. And I normally pull in the middle so I get a few fibers that are longer than the others to get a tapered wing. And when I tie it in, I try to hold it about one centimeter wide. And I pull it in, put it in, move it in on top of the fly like that with my thumb on top. I can pull it back a little bit, see, so I get this, the length I want. And then I just tie it in few turns, move those fingers back, use the thumbnail again and press this out on the sides. Get that airplane wing where you get most motion from the fish perspective. Like that, pull it, feel it, look at the taper. It's always when you taper there will be a few strands that will come loose. Then I take this and I pull it up and I just cut it off. And the thing with tying uh, what I would call a classic design, uh, like my design of, of a classic tube flies, is where I want the, <coughs> the hackles to be divided by the wing. But to do that on the half turbo cone, you need to put on <coughs> most of the wing first. And uh, I do this, and then I add a little bit of, uh, of angel hair and I use, that was not a little bit, that was a lot. That's good enough for another fly. And uh, make sure this is fairly even. 
tie them in and my diamond pearl mix actually is a uh, little bit of silver a little bit of gold a little bit of pearl in a couple of different colors like all our SSS materials the diamond pearl it's got five different colors in it okay taper and pull and cut see how this looks in a few of the films like this I've been having a little material hanging down on your side that I haven't seen okay so instead of now doing hackles I will put on the first part of the black wing and you can see how very little I'm going to use I treat it the same way brush it out and the thing is when you brush you also untangle so every fiber comes on the sides instead of being mixed and I just hold this in spread it out make sure it's wide look at it looks I have a taper and tie it in see so it's even I've got a few fibers here that I don't want I, I want the ply to be white but not not so it comes down on the on the other side the wing even if it's wide it's what's steering the fly in the right place uh, so it doesn't start to, to tumble too much okay a little bit of super glue I use support and I put a drop of super glue onto the wing just to secure it okay main part of the wing I'm gonna put on jungle cogs and uh, I will use uh, natural feathers here today and uh, like you know I've told you before cite this cite this important do it the right way curving jungle cock over the fingers like this uh, I start by curving it so it follows the wing this way I also want it to curve in like that this was curving in nicely I tie this in about as long as I have my plastic tube so I look at this and I tie this in and uh, always start with the one feather on my side here make sure it comes where uh, where it should be and it can be a little harder to put the jungle cocks on to a very wide wing like this than on a narrow wing but it's uh, it's just to adjust it down on the sides when the wing is down on the sides take the other one do the same curve it over my finger take away the, the part I don't want look up from above and tie it in normally I twist the fly to see this but um, can't do that now then I'm putting everything out of focus for you okay so there we are two jungle cocks put in good and what we're gonna do now we're gonna do a hackle see what we have here the one I used there before we'll try this that was not good enough uh, here we go and I split it take away the soft part and what I do as you can see I don't take away everything I, I leave some of this fluffy part here because that's gonna add motion and it's also gonna add uh, some volume to the fly then I create this little triangle and I cut it off and now I have to remember that I'm doing two hackles so I need I don't need more than one or two turns of this tie it in 
and I can still work my fly up onto the medium tubing. Take this and when I wind hackles, I always double them. And uh, that means I'm holding back the part of the feather that both part of the feather so everything comes on one side and I tie this in and uh, two turns will be good. Double and tie in and secure. Okay so now we're gonna just tie in the last hackle and uh, uh, I'm using a grizzly hackle and if you listen to Roland on his original fly, he used only blue hackle. Uh, I prefer to have a little bit of gray in front of the blue. And here I'm preparing a really soft uh, feather and I tie it in. And I'm going to do the same with this as I did with the blue one, but now I work my thread down to this, to the, um, onto the extra small tubing. And then I take this and I just fold back and I double this and it's going to be also be only two half, two turns. See how this is super soft. It's all over the place. Hold it back and double in one turn and one more and it's normal that I will have to untangle this a little bit after I'm ready just make sure that I'll stroke this back and I just put on one or two turns and uh, secure it and I can pull a bit in the feather just to make sure it's tight. Okay, now I use a dubbing needle just to untangle this and get all the fibers where I want them. And the thing now with doing the classic fly is that I will divide the hackles with one more wing. And it's gonna be very few strands and I'm gonna use very soft hair and I'm gonna look at the tips so I, I get uh, the best tips on the hair so it uh, will swim as good, good as possible. Okay, and untangle this, do it wide about half a centimeter, hold it in on top, divide the hackles, look at the tapering, how much do I want? Like that, looks good. I can do a little more if I want, then I get a thinner wing and it will uh, take less current to move it. And tie it in with a few turns I take this and I pull it tight. Look at the fly. Looks good, I think. And actually, Cillin is a fly that I like to fish. Cut it off. And like that. And now you can see how we turn this from being what I call pussy style where you have the hackles in front of the wing and now we did what is the classic design. Um, I will do, getting into my organizer again here, I will do an extra small uh, half turbo and the half turbo's got more weight in the bottom and it's open on the top and what it does it balances the fly but it also gives it a little narrower profile than the full turbo. Little bit of glue, support, and just put on a little tiny bit here. And then you should be sure to pull down the cone before 
the the glue is getting hard because otherwise you won't get it down. I pull it down tight, tight, tight. Take the fly out of the vise. Make sure it's down tight. Looks good. Take it, hold it up. Use support and cut off so I have a couple of mil. White fly, white lighter. And melt it down. Careful, just a little bit at a time. Look at the hole. And uh, should be good enough for a 0 0.50 millimeter leader. And we done a classic Zillum. Sunshine fly. Uh, Roland fishes it early season, very, very big. I fish big ones too, uh, especially for sea trout. But it's for me, it's not that often that you get the really, really clear water early season and very, very high uh, water for the big fly and cold. Uh, so for me, this is more like a fly that I fish during late spring or summer conditions. When it comes to Sillen, uh, I fish them also down to very, very small sizes. Uh, I fish them uh, on the smallest BTTs, super light, or on the smallest TTT, but especially on the smallest uh, BTT for extreme low water, uh, fishing them uh, very close to the surface. And when you need a fly that's not more than maybe 15 millimeters, people call it the grills fly. I've taken some big fish on small flies on the top also during this condition. So, okay, it's ready. And um, like I said before, sometimes when you tie flies like this, exhibition tying or in front of a camera, they turn out good. And sometimes they turn out like flies that you really don't want to fish but um i'll fish this anytime it looked really nice i think uh okay thank you very much for watching this our 14th pattern of the month film and um i normally say that next time we're gonna do something totally different but next time we're gonna do something totally different we're gonna do a big mean fly with a lot of silhouette and i won't tell you the pattern now uh, you will see in a month time and for those of you interested we have the packs the material packs uh, and uh, we have the fly packs uh, you get them for a good deal actually and um, i must thank all of you that subscribe to us and still get your packs and one thing with subscribing, when you've done it now 14 times, you get a lot of wallets, but also the wallets are good for all your fly tying materials. And also when you have the smaller wallets, you can, like me, you can use them for your shooting heads, your leader material, for everything. And uh, as I said, when we made those, the big one, I, I met the guy, he had his maps and his underwear and everything in this is very good for everything so hopefully you don't get you can never get too much material and never get too many flies but maybe too many wallets but i think you can find good use for quite a few so again thank you very much and go out fish hard and stay healthy and uh, buy good flies Thank you for watching.